So um, I had the opportunity to present the real world data of lysocaptogene marilucil or lysocell in patients with relapsed or refractory large B cell lymphoma in the United States. We know that lysocell is an effective treatment strategy for patients with relapsed refractory large B cell lymphoma based on a variety of prior studies. Uh, currently, lysocell is FDA approved for patients with relapsed and refractory large B cell lymphoma who have had at least one prior systemic therapy. However, real world data using this therapy are limited. So here we presented uh, data from the CIVMTR registry looking at I outcomes in a real world population. Um, we had uh, identified over uh, 600 patients who had been treated with uh, commercial conforming lysocell therapy across 58 institutions. Uh, we did require that patients have at least one visit following CAR T cell infusion and at least 100 days of follow-up. So with that criteria, we had approximately 400 patients available for the analysis. Um, we, this was a heavily pretreated patient population. Patients, uh, approximately 85% 85 of patients had two or more prior lines of therapy. Um, most patients had diffuse large B cell lymphoma NOS, though other high risk histologies such as high grade B cell lymphoma were also represented. Um, and we also had a range of ages with approximately a third of patients being under age 65 and 30% of patients being 75 or older. So uh, we found that in this real world setting that this combination was still active. Uh, the overall response rate was 76% and the complete response rate was 63%. And we found that the median duration of response, progression-free survival, and overall survival was not reached. And the median follow-up was approximately 11 months. Um, we found that the 12-month progression-free survival was just over 50%, and the 12-month overall survival was, um, six, was 66%. And we also looked at toxicity in the real-world setting. Um, we saw that the rates of cytokine release syndrome were low and occurred in just over 50% of patient and uh, grade three or higher CRS was rare and occurred in less than 5% of patients. Neurotoxicity was also uncommon and occurred in 30% of patients and 11% of those patients had grade three or higher neurotoxicity events. Um, we also wanted to look at outcomes by age, so we broke down patients who were less than 65 and over 65, and we saw no difference in terms of the efficacy or safety among those patient groups. And another group we were interested in looking at were patients who may not have been eligible for the pivotal phase two transform study. And so we looked at the baseline characteristics of patients who um, may not have matched the eligibility criteria of that trial. And those patients represented over 50% of patients in this cohort. We also found that the efficacy and safety of lysocell in that group appeared similar to the overall population that we studied. So overall, we found that lysocell is a effective option and it seems to have a manageable safety profile even in this real world setting with patients who may not have been able to enroll in that clinical trial.